Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 500 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So, before we even start, why are you wearing a Christmas shirt? Because summer is over and like the holidays just become this big like holiday. Summer's not over yet. It's not even Labor Day yet. It's almost my birthday. Yeah, but it's not Labor Day yet. I know. So September why are we? <laughs> That's your birthday, not Labor Day. It is my birthday. It's a holiday. It's a national holiday, isn't it? It's a national holiday here in this house. Why do we have to like push off Labor Day and Halloween and everything else for Christmas? I know. I'm sorry, but I've already got my mind started thinking about like how many times have I tried to do a nightmare before Christmas theme for Halloween because I'm so excited about Christmas. She came home the other day from the store. I got home from a game and she's like, you've got to see what I got in Walmart. She's like, I got everybody's Christmas presents. I'm like, it's August. They're having... We're going to put those things away and lose them. I we know. do that every year. True. And then you find them like the next year and you're like, oh yeah, these were supposed to be part of the Christmas like haul. <laughs> But yeah, there's having they're having some really awesome sales, especially on toys this time of year and anything for like the pool. But like we live in Florida, so you can use a pool raft in November. Well, we did that last year. Remember, we went to Costco and they had a raft that was normally like $150 on sale for 10. So we bought five of them. They're huge. We gave a couple. I think we even bought more than five. We bought five for ourselves and then also got a couple for other people. And our thing was... When it gets dirty, throw it out. Yeah, just throw it away. Like for ten dollars, just throw it out instead of going in out and trying to clean that thing or repair a hole. Just throw it out. It's only ten bucks. Yeah, because there's like this weird like dust and soot that happens to pool rafts that are just like laying out in the Florida weather. We don't even have a tree hanging over the top of our house and yet there'll be it like leaves disgusting. and stuff. It gets like really wonky. So yeah, yeah I bought some cute things, but I'm already thinking about what am I gonna do to decorate our Christmas tree. So I actually sent you a photo to post of last year's Christmas tree. I did a Thanksgiving theme. There's a problem. We don't have a Christmas tree anymore. What? Tabitha ate oh, our Christmas tree yeah. last year. We had this really, really nice Christmas tree. We had gotten it from QVC when it was like on I clearance. totally forgot. And she ate like the whole bottom of it. Remember she kept pulling the pieces off so we had to throw it up. Well, she ended up eating through the wires. I totally forgot about that. We, so have, we have no Christmas, a Christmas tree. tree. But that's okay. They're already putting them out in the stores. I know, but the the good the real tree, the fake trees that are really good, they're expensive. This year may be a tiny little fake Charlie Brown tree. I still have to think about and look forward to themes. So is there a theme? Put in the comments down below a Christmas tree theme that you think we should decorate our tree for Christmas. Newspaper. No, like <laughs> Candyland or all winter birds or I don't know. I think we should just make a bunch of decorations out of newspaper, like make origami newspaper ornaments. You're just trying to be cheap. No, I think it would be funny. <laughs> so, but I am getting excited about that. And then we had a great day in church today. Yep. Packed rooms. Yeah. We're gonna go to six services. Six soon. services in a few weeks. I'm like so excited. Well, five services in two weeks and then six services Three, were three weeks after that? Yeah. And it was a busy week at church. We yep. had, um, I had like a team event on Friday night, which was like super fun for like our kids group. It was like a uh, Toy Story Midway game themed event. It looked like a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I had a football game. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We had some potato sack races and there were a couple of teenagers that thought like, I've got this. I could totally win this potato sack race. And we had like one mom of two that was like, no, I am winning this or dying. Like, I mean, she was all in. I thought it was funny seeing the videos of like grandmas 
like potato sack racing, like down the outside on the grass, like racing against a bunch of teenagers. And then there was your mom who was going down and Caleb running behind her going, she better not fall, getting ready to catch her. And she's hopping along in a potato sack. You've got to love that relationship that they have. He, he wants her to be independent. Like you do you, I love you nanny. But at the same time, he's like, yeah, I don't trust her. Yeah. Like her balance isn't always great. I remember when she got the bicycle, he was the first one to go, this is a bad idea. <laughs> get off that bicycle. Like he was not risking it. Yeah, so he, here she is, potato sack racing with him running behind her, potato sack racing without a potato sack, basically. Yep. And then earlier in the week, we actually had the Coasties. Yeah, we had the Coasties, which is an award ceremony. Well, it's not really an award ceremony. It's kind of like a thank you dinner is more of what it is, where the church just gets together all of the volunteers in the church and we have a nice like catered dinner. And then we do give out like some award for like people who are like super outstanding, but really it's just a way to say thank you to every single person. Yeah, and it was just, it was a nice opportunity for us to kind of dress up and dress swanky. One of the few days a year where we actually get super dressed up. Yeah, usually I just dress crazy <laughs> based on whatever the theme you is. You looked really hot in that dress. Aw, thank you. Well, I think you look very handsome yourself, sir. No, it was awesome. So we're gonna post some pictures of what we were wearing. Yep. And then also I've got a couple of pictures to share um, of people that happen to be in our Facebook family group. Yeah. So we have Monica. Yep. Is is a picture that, that I wanted to Monica share. Monica and her husband, Caesar. Gorgeous young lady. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. And then also Miss Mindy. Yes. Who is beautiful. And they're looking amazing. Mindy looks amazing. Every time I see her, she's like, oh, I'm not really having any success. I'm like, you look incredible. And Monica is like a hottie patati. Like, yeah. oh my gracious. Like, you would never believe she has had a child. Like, no way. Yep. So, yeah. So, we had a good time with that. but And it's been a busy week because of all the stuff with church. And we had football. And we had a bunch of other stuff going on. So... I, I saw earlier in the week that it was going to be super busy. So I meal prepped a bunch of stuff, not for us, but really for the kids. It was really kind of funny. So we had all of the little containers. Yeah, I bought these containers. I'll leave a link down below. They were great. And they're like, basically like bento boxes. Well, the kids have like called them adult Lunchables. <laughs> That's what they call them, adult Lunchables because um, they, they have the little compartments. Oh, I bought two different kinds. One has like three different compartments and then one of them is just like an open container. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I made everything and I packed and I made like a bunch of hamburgers and then I did like two hamburgers and some broccoli in them. And then I made chili and scooped chili in each one and some chicken fingers in the air fryer. We had all these different things. And it's been great because they've been just, hey, I'm hungry Grab and, it and go. one out. It's been so nice. And it also um, causes you to think about your portion sizes. Because before we would just put like a tray out of like lasagna and they'd be like, okay, well, half of this is mine and half of this is That's Anthony's. That's one of the you know? reasons that I did it because I made some for us too. Like I made our the meat layer lasagna and I was able to be like, okay, this thing is supposed to be eight slices mm -hmm. and so i literally put out eight different ones and each one had a slice and this way i could say to you if i was going to my game you could say well what am i supposed to eat and i'm like just pull one of these out and you knew exactly how many calories you can just go into chronometer and say like hey i'm having one slice of this so everything was kind of portioned out yeah because otherwise it's like well what's a slice and it yeah. comes down to that game like of well you said eight pieces, but if one piece is like twice the size of the other piece, it still counts, right? It was, and it was awesome for Caleb too, because you know, you had made chaffles, yep. you had made um, the lasagna, you had made some hamburgers and stuff. And you know, sometimes you feel like different food, right? So he would wake up in the morning, sometimes he wanted a waffle, sometimes he wanted lasagna. Like, it's not like there's a rule that you have to eat breakfast food for breakfast. Right. And we found with the chaffles that it works really well if you make them ahead of time and freeze them. Mm -hmm. You can put them in the refrigerator, but I found that it's working better if you put them in the freezer and then when you want to use them, like you literally like, an egg, like a, an egg or frozen waffle or something, just take them out. You could throw them in the air fryer or throw them in the toaster oven. You can even put them in the microwave. Some people like them soft like that. Like our kids like them soft like that. They don't yeah. want them crunchy. Right. I always liked them crispy. Yeah. You know, like a crunchy, yeah. No, they, our kids want them like, put them in the microwave and let them come out like a flimsy piece of bread. That's how they want to eat them. I know. So whatever works for you. 
Um, but it was really nice and it was super convenient and everybody had a different schedule this week. Yeah. So if Caleb is home at 11 and Anthony's going out at three and I mean, it was just really, really nice. Yes. Yeah, so I think we're going to do that again this week and I'm going to try to film it. We were going to do it last week and then I'm like, but I was like halfway through when I realized, ah, I don't feel like taking out the camera now and I'm halfway done. So it's not just something that, I mean, meal prepping isn't just something to help you be successful on your diet. Right. But I think that it's just something that- It's uh, convenient. That is convenient. I mean, you're putting in the work up front, but then you're just done for the week. And you honestly- You don't have to think about it anymore. It didn't even take that long. So I'm trying to think of what I made. So I made, I made a batch of the chili, which unfortunately, like, the chili was supposed to continue cooking for a little while. I ran to a game, I come home, and Rachel's divvied out half the chili to Caleb already. So that was like, probably like three or four servings, which is, that's when I was like, no, no, we're gonna scoop all this out so we know we have enough servings. That chili goes fast in this house It though. does, but I mean, it, it literally takes like 20 minutes to actually make the chili and then just let it kind of simmer for like another hour or two hours to really that's the absorb hard part. all the flavors. Letting it sit. So, I mean, but that was literally like 20 to 30 minutes of work. Then the lasagna was like, again, another 15 or 20 minutes of work at most. I don't even think it took me that long to put it together. And then you bake it for 30 minutes and that was done. Um, the, I think the longest thing we did was I bought a bunch of the uh, beef back ribs and some beef short ribs. Those were great. And I really bought them for us, just for you and I to eat. And like, we just ended up with so many because they were like on sale at Penn Dutch. So I just like took the little containers and put like three or four beef back ribs in each one and said anytime somebody wants one you can just grab out and you know i'm eating three ribs but they're pretty decent size oh i was just thinking that was the thing that took the longest but all of the other meal prep combined was maybe an hour and a half and then yeah and then you just didn't even have to think about and there's it still two or three boxes left in there and i think about like how much money did we save and do the boys save by not having to think, oh, well, nothing's made. Like, let's just go order Uber Eats or go to Publix or. Well, yeah, especially like with the boys, because like you'd call me up and say like, hey, like, I don't feel like cooking. Just stop and get them a sub, which once in a while, I don't mind treating them to a sub, but you know, five, six dollars, seven dollars for a sub multiplied by two. And if you're going to do that a couple of days a week, Add doing that. it this way, I don't think even with the beef ribs, I spent maybe 65 or $70. And again, that was enough food for all four of us for the entire week. We and did, the beef back ribs were $30 of that. Right. When we did have some other extra fun food, like this was an interesting week. It wasn't just eggs this week. We had uh, ground bison. Yep. Which was amazing. It was very just delicious. And then um, we also had a, a wonderful Cajun dish that you just sort of came up with. Yeah, they had at Penn Ducks, they had like wild caught red rock shrimp. Mm -hmm. And it was like ridiculously cheap. I want to say it was like $3 a pound, right? It was like $5 off a pound or something like that. I made sure I took a good look at them. Like, is there something wrong with these that they're so cheap? But they weren't, they were just delicious. Yeah, so I called Rachel, I'm like, go pick these up. And so they came frozen. And so we, I took them out and I'm like, what am I gonna do with this? Well, I have this um, other sausage and Rachel's not a huge sausage person I'm unless not. you kind of mix it with stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, let me make a Cajun dish with it. And I just mixed together some Cajun seasoning with some garlic and kind of just like made them like almost blackened in the cast iron pan and it was good. It was like We're gonna make that into a recipe video. Yeah, it was like the andouille sausage. Yeah. And it didn't have like a ton of spice. It wasn't like it blew your face off. It no. was just very flavorful. And we put it over cauliflower rice. So it was almost like a jambalaya, but not a saucy jambalaya. You could have easily turned it into a saucy jambalaya. I felt like I was getting away with something, to be <laughs> honest, because it was so It tasty. was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we're gonna do that again this week. And then the other thing that we're gonna actually have a video on later this week is I was experimenting because of the whole chaffle craze that's still going on. Yeah. Um, we came up with a keto chow, it's just a waffle. It's not using, you know, any kind of cheese. It's just like eggs and some protein powder and stuff like that. 
but it came out perfect. You it can't is, even tell it's keto. It is the most delicious Belgian waffle batter I've ever tasted. And the way we came up with it, it comes out really well, and it's designed to make in one Belgian waffle, but you can make four of the little four-inch chaffles. But if you just it. want, just go for it, like, Saturday morning breakfast with a giant waffle. And the nice thing about it was, is the way I put it together using butter and eggs and everything else, it actually comes out with decent keto macros, even though you're using a protein powder. It had decent keto macros, and it wasn't even really bad with calories. They give you the entire, think about a full Belgian waffle. It's like 270 calories. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. And it is solid bread tasting. Yeah. I mean, it was good. You really cannot tell. I can't wait for that video to come out and see what people think of it. Me too. So I did want to talk about what happened on the football field yesterday. I am so glad I wasn't there. I already knew it was like not going to be a great day because Anthony and I were working the afternoon games and we're in South Florida and at this time of the year in South Florida, you get lightning delays every single day. Yeah. There's rain and lightning, three o'clock, four o'clock every day. Don't make plans. So we're like in constant communication with the crew that was there in the morning and like they have these different policies for like our youth league football that... If a game gets delayed, you have to, there's like this mathematical calculation of when you can resume the game or does it have to get pushed off to another day to make the day not go ridiculously long. And so I'm in communication with a guy who's in a lightning delay and I'm like, please do not give them extra time. If if they're not back on the field by, I think it was like two o'clock or something like that, Please don't tell them, like, I'll give you an extra half hour because that makes my day take longer. Because we're night. supposed to start at 2.30 and you're already a full game behind. So now we're not getting on the field till like 3.30, 4 o'clock. So he's like, oh, I won't. So, of course, Anthony and I leave. We get up to the game and we find out they were in another lightning delay. They delayed that one game and pushed it to another day. And then now they're in a lightning delay for another game. And as we're getting there... They're walking on the field, and I'm like looking at how much time is left, and I'm like, you guys aren't even supposed to be starting this based on this mathematical calculation. Math. I'm like, you should have canceled this game like 25 minutes ago, and they're like, oh, no, 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 we're letting them play. So needless to say, they're like, why are you so upset? I'm like, because this is delaying me now again. Again, we were supposed to start between 2.30 and 3 o'clock. We didn't get on the field till 5 p.m. Oh, Lord. And now we have three football games to play. Didn't get done until midnight. So that was really fun considering... Youth sports. I had to get up at 3 a.m. with you this morning. Yeah. When she was getting ready to leave, I bent down to pray with me. And I was like, like half zombie while she was praying. Yeah, he was like, amen. And I'm like, I haven't started yet, but okay. But I was ridiculously tired because the game didn't get done until midnight. Then we had to drive home. Then I had to write this long incident report because it was, the first game was awful. We had coaches running on the field cursing us because they don't know the rules and we're throwing flags on them. And then we had other like representatives from the leagues who are arguing calls and they're not allowed to. So we're throwing flags on them. We have a parent run out on the field and it culminated with a parent not liking the way the game ended because it was a tight, close game. Well, there's a winner and a loser. And the final play of the game, a kid got legally tackled, but his head hit the ground and it looked worse than it was. Oh. And this mom comes running across the field, gets in my face, oh my Lord. gets in Anthony's face. We're like, go to the sideline. And she's like, make me. We're like, fine, we'll call the police. She finally starts walking over. And I turn around and there's coaches going at it with each other from the two teams. And there's Anthony, your son, who has decided I'm going to step in between these coaches, adult him. men, to try to break it up. Oh, Lord. Which he does. But some parent decided to jump down onto the field and shove Anthony, which is a felony in the state of Florida. Oh, my gracious. So now I've got the red shirt, like, getting in between Anthony and this guy, telling the guy back away, and we're having to call the police. So I had to write this long incident report. 
So by the time we got home and I finished my incident report, it was two in the morning. Wow. And then we're getting up at three. Oh my goodness. I hope you enjoyed that hour <laughs> of sleep. It's one of those sleeps that it's just it's just gonna tick you off. I honestly was not planning. I nodded off, but I, I, if I slept for like 20 minutes, it was a lot because I was just like, there's no sense in even going to bed because I'm just going to be really angry when I get up. Right, yeah. <laughs> it just, it didn't take the edge off of the sleep or the fatigue, it just made it But here's the problem with that, and it's the reason I had brought up like the lack of sleep because I've been frustrated this week. Yeah. Like I have been like super stressed because we've got so much going on and I've been like not getting sleep. And I feel like the, like I'm holding water, the scale has been going up, but I'm eating less calories than I normally eat. And it's just really frustrating. It shows you like how important it's like it is to manage that stress and manage your sleep because you can be eating almost no calories, eating perfect, I haven't been eating any garbage, yet watch the scale going up and up and up where I'm up like four or five pounds. And it makes no sense because again, eating three or 400 calories less than normal. Welcome to the world of being a woman, <laughs> okay? Well, it was interesting because Thomas DeLaller just recently put up a video about like how like not getting enough sleep and being stressed can actually kick you out of ketosis even if you're eating perfect keto macros and perfect keto food. It's definitely something that I battle with too because it's it's like your your rest time is the time that you feel like okay, well, if I needed to grab an hour from someplace or I need to, you know, budget some more time it's, for something. Sleep's the first thing to go. Sleep is the first thing to go. And it probably should be one of the last things to go. We should work out something else in our schedule, but yeah, I always pull from sleep. I'll always just tend to get up, you know, an hour earlier. Yep. Or I will, you know, push back my bedtime, but I'm starting to feel it too. And what hasn't helped is the fact that my games have been late because again, South Florida, lightning delays. Right. Had a game on Thursday, went long. Had a game on Friday, went long, you know. And so I'm leaving for these games at like five o'clock. I don't want to have to have a lot in my stomach to run up and down the field. So I eat like, a small lunch at like four o'clock or three o'clock and then I've been going to my game but now I've only eaten like six or seven hundred calories and I'm running a bunch of miles so like well that's not good because I'm gonna screw up my metabolism so I've been eating late when I get home and then going to bed because I'm not getting home till 10 30 11 o'clock so what are you gonna try to do next week to well kind of yesterday for Saturday battle this I knew that I was gonna have this ending now my day was not supposed we were my day was supposed to be over by 8 30 Good of luck. course, didn't get down at mid until midnight. So I just decided yesterday became I ate a piece of the lasagna and I had um, a perfect keto bar is what I ate yesterday. And that was at like two o'clock. Went to the game. And when I came home, my plan was to drink a keto chow. Mm -hmm. I actually was supposed to drink two keto chows. But... I was like, I got home so late. I'm like, you know what? I'm just not eating because what I would normally have done is eaten. Well, I don't want to eat at midnight right. or 1 a.m. and then get in bed. I mean, that was just going to be ridiculous. So this week, I'm going to just try to like probably eat earlier in the day and eat all of my meals by like 3 o'clock and then just say like, I'm just going to fast the next day. And, and I'll probably two or three days this week, like when I have my games, which is going to be... Wednesday and Thursday and Friday or Wednesday and Friday this week is I'm going to fast dinner instead of fasting breakfast. I have been doing that and I have enjoyed it more. I will say it is easier for me to cut my day off and say like, okay, for me, it's like six o'clock by, you know, by six o'clock, everything is eaten. I'm done for the day and then just end my eating window then and then be able to eat a little bit earlier. And see, that usually doesn't work for me because again, I want to watch television while I eat and eat while I watch television, which is a bad habit, I know, but it's just, it's a habit. And so if I am home and I'm watching TV, I don't snack anymore while I'm eating, t watching TV, but I am gonna say like, this is my eating time, this is my watching TV time, and I just combine them. And then when I'm done eating, I can go work on the computer or whatever. So 
if I were to try to not eat dinner on a regular basis, and now when it's time to relax and watch TV, I'm gonna probably find myself snacking. Well, do you feel like you're gonna just have to say, hey, I, I'm, I have to either watch TV or eat. I can't do both together. I don't know. I probably will never be able to do that. I shouldn't say never, but so, but it helps right now. And again, it's my, what I've always said. If I'm busy, I don't eat. And so three or four days of the week, I'm not busy in the evening. So on those days, I will eat in the evening. Mm -hmm. And then on the days that I am busy in the evening, because I have football games, I will eat in the morning. Well, I definitely say never say never for you because I'm really proud of you. You are still not drinking a bunch of Diet Coke. I've had a couple. But not like it was at all. No, no. And the couple I've had is a, similar reasons. Anthony and I are out. I've run out of water. You know, I just want something to drink. I don't have any cans of Zevia or anything with me. So we would stop at the gas station. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get a Diet Coke. And But it's like very few and far between. Not like it was. So if you had caught yourself like a year ago and said like, oh, well, you're not going to have any like Diet Coke in your life for the most part. You'd be like, I, I can't ever see right. a time when I would do that. Right. So now it's become a reality. So maybe there'll be a time if you, you know, put your effort into it where you can watch TV and eat and maybe not do them together. I don't know. I enjoy doing them together. But on a positive note... All of this stuff with the struggle that I'm having where like, and again, I know it's just water because like came home down seven pounds the next morning. So I, obviously it's just water. I didn't lose seven right. pounds of fat in one day. Right. Uh, but with all of that going on, I know we're going to be able to get things on track because we're getting ready to do something with Keto Savage. Oh, I'm a little bit scared. Which I know you're scared about. But I wanted to mention that if you guys, this video is recording on Sunday, tomorrow is Monday, which is the day you're gonna be, we're gonna release this. So if you are watching this on the day it releases, around 5 p.m. Eastern time, we're supposed to, if everything works out right, do a joint Facebook Live with uh, Robert Sykes, Keto Savage. So to excited. talk about a project that we're going to be working on. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this works out because neither of us have been emailing him all the way long, all week long. And neither of us know how to do this. I barely know how to work Facebook Live to begin with. Now we've got to try to do a Facebook Live together, joint, through our Facebook group. And I don't even know if that's even possible. <laughs> When in doubt, go through his channel. Well, I think we are going through his channel. We're going to be a guest on his channel, but I'm not quite sure. So, But it will be announced like, hey, we're live either on our channel or on his channel in our Facebook group and on our Facebook page. So just watch it. Also, we may be listed under your name because I don't know how it works because the Facebook group is through your private profile. Oh, okay. So just kind of... Keep your eye out. We'll put a message on YouTube and we'll put a message in the Facebook group like, hey, we're live with Keto Savage if we're able to work it out. Yeah. something We will work it out somehow. But I'm excited about that because we're going to be talking about like speeding up your metabolism, helping you to be able to eat more without gaining weight. And that's always is, a good thing. This seems like my dream. This is my dream challenge. <laughs> like, get me there. Let's do this. We're also going to be talking about working with bands. I'm doing it, but my arms are not quite happy about it yet. I know that I will work up to where like, oh my goodness, even just doing this is still like hurting. But um, yeah, I know I will work up to uh, be able to get those really thick bands, but yeah, no, I'm still in the little rubber bands. That's okay. It's kicking my butt still. You wanna do comments? Yes, please. Okay, let me put my drink down. Do we have a subscriber of the week? Um, we have a couple of subscribers of the week, but I also wanted to mention one first. Uh, so this isn't really a subscriber of the week, but it's Jason Butler. <gasps> Jason! And I, the only reason I'm putting this in, again, it's not his story, but it's just a reminder. So I'm going to put a picture. He put a picture of him with his son on our Facebook group. And he wrote, whenever I question why I stick to the keto lifestyle, all I have to do is remember why I started in the first place. Mm. I knew that if I did make a change in my life, I wasn't going to be around for lots of birthdays with this guy. And I wasn't going to let food take that time away. Oh my gosh. How beautiful is this child? Is that like not awesome? Oh my goodness. So 
again, my whole thing was I wanted to put that in because are you crying? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just a reminder. This is why we're doing this. It's not just weight loss. I mean, obviously weight loss is going to help us be around longer, but yeah. I mean, the fact that your mom has improved her health and be around, hopefully to see her great grandchildren. Yeah, I actually have a picture of her and I at the Coasties that yeah. we should share. So yeah, like that we can have these moments together. Yeah, it's it's so much more about getting healthy and like an, an entire wellness feeling, not just getting skinny. Right. So yeah, Jason, I just love like your why. And I think it's important that we all do that. Like. What's put up why? a picture like you've got things all over the house like little notes or whatever what is your why let us know down in the comment section what's your why why are, why you, doing are you doing keto like what is it that you're looking to gain other than maybe just losing weight like do you want to be around longer for your grandchildren or your children or have a happier marriage or what let us know what your why is because and if you always have that in front of you it really helps you to stay on track yep. you know what I, we've talked about before one of my favorite books is the principle of the path and it is direction not intention leads to destination so one way to just constantly keep yourself headed in the direction that you want to to go is to say like what is your why like why are you doing this what what is your goal and for jason seeing like hey i want to be around for for my kid and i want to share in all these birthdays and i want to be healthy and and happy every single time we celebrate one of these milestones you know when you pick up something that is maybe off of your diet plan but you remember your why you're like it's way easier to put that down and to stay on track right because right. you just you have that why in the forefront of your mind. So our subscriber of the week is Marna. Hi Marna. And I'll put Marna's pictures up here. She said, I don't own a scale and I prefer to keep it that way. Brilliant. She's like, so my victories are based on appearance and how clothes fit. Yeah, she's not dealing with the devil scale. Yeah, seriously, you are way smarter than I am. She's like, the pics where I'm wearing the dark blue shirt were taken this morning. The others were taken September of 2018. I haven't lost much, but I'm happy with my progress. The scale does go down at the doctor's office. I've got a case of the keto whoosh going on today. And so wow. there is a huge difference. There you can definitely a see a huge difference. Significant difference. Wow, congratulations, Marna. Yeah. And you know what? It's the little victories, and that's what's going to keep you going, too. That is, but I love that she doesn't have a scale and <laughs> she's like tracking her progress with pictures. Yep. Okay, so I also wanted to just point out we've talked about them before, but. Uh, Heather and Phil put up some progress Hi, pictures. Heather and Phil. So I wanted to put them up. I mean, I love and they're them. just like awesome people. So uh, I'll put their pictures up there before and after. And Heather just wrote 14 months ago, my awesome husband Phil, he's lost 65 pounds and I've wow. lost 102. Wow. Our health has improved beyond measure. Doing this together has brought us closer and our lives are so much happier. And just, I don't know if you saw the pictures they put up, but oh like, my the gracious. incredible. I mean, Heather looks incredible before and after, but take a look at Phil. Like, I'm actually jealous of Phil. Look at Phil. Wow. You guys look amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I'm like super jealous of him right now. I mean, he looks fantastic. Yeah. So again, Both I just, I wanted to kind of spotlight them. You know, anytime you guys put a progress picture, we want to just like spotlight that. You guys are awesome. You look amazing. Tabitha's like going nuts laying down over there. I know. She's like all stretched out. Okay. So comments. So Maria wrote, Hi Maria. Love y'all. Wouldn't it be fun to switch your parts of the intro so Rachel would say what Joe normally says and vice versa? We've actually tried that. We have tried. <laughs> and it's terrible. It's terrible and it's we're just so used to having our parts. I mean, like we tried it that one time and I think we had like 20 outtakes <laughs> before we could even get through it. We're clunky. Yeah, really clunky. So Kelly wrote, Hey Kelly. Rachel, you are so blessed. Joe's love style is cooking and caring for you. Well, now I see why you picked up this comment. Absolutely. How do you not put a comment that's bragging on you? I love it. Well, you do have that love language. It's like caring for people. So I'm glad. I am blessed. I'm very, very thankful for that because you, you do take good care well, of me. Well, thank you. I enjoy doing it. So Rosie wrote, Hey Rosie. I'm always commenting on how much I like your Hollister tops because I'm from Hollister, California. Oh my gosh. Lucky. Seriously. Oh my goodness. Is there like a Hollister on every corner up there? Like that's awesome. I just like Hollister because their clearance prices are ridiculously cheap. I just like their color palette. Yeah, they have really nice colors. It's just, and the boys love it too. Yep. So Emma wrote, Hey Emma. Add one more, I guess she's talking about like to your subscribers. Oh, okay. 
I just discovered your channel. Extending my keto family on social media has been a lifesaver. My hubby and I are all alone doing the keto lifestyle. Well, you are alone no more, Miss Emma. Thank you so much for joining. Yes, and welcome like, to the family. Absolutely, and if you haven't joined our Facebook family group, check it out on Facebook. It's free. Yep, there's a link down below. And the nicest people in the world are in there. Yeah. If you're looking for some friends who can help like encourage you and keep you going on keto, our Facebook family group has got incredible people in it. They also have fantastic recipes and they know where the deals are at. Yes. So Lizbeth wrote, Hey Lizbeth. Yes, girlfriend, I'm with you on paper planners and books. I was laughing because my hubby and I have had the same conversation and debate about technology. Paper is where it's at. No, absolutely not iPads, iPhones, technology makes your life easier. Sometimes until it doesn't, until you put all your eggs in the technology basket and it crashes on you or something goes wrong. Or you lose your paper book and you get it wet or you leave it at the office. I have left stuff at the office before, but I do find it very therapeutic to write things down. That I would agree with you on. I enjoy writing. I remember by down. writing. That's one of the reasons I can't remember anything more because I don't write anymore. I just I love it. <laughs> Kristen wrote. Hey, Kristen. Thanks for the video and all the positive words. I've at times also said I'm allergic to sugar sweeteners uh, because it's so much easier. I appreciate the channel suggestion too. I always struggle to keep my little one focused on whole foods and less sugar, especially for school lunches. She's talking about uh, take, taking a look at Christy Davis's website. I or love her Christy channel. Davis. Oh my goodness, she is awesome. Yes, she had so she has so much like good stuff, good content, and um, she had actually put up a, a new video last week talking about like what her teenage daughter takes for lunch because she had one for the ten year old and then she had one for. A high school student because obviously they're different they're things very their lunches look very different right. you know one of the things that she pointed out was one of her daughters is way into eating food cold yes are you you're a cold food I like eater. Cold, like I like cold pizza I liked cold chicken I mean I love eating cold spaghetti I mean I don't obviously eat that stuff anymore but yeah I love cold food isn't it funny Caleb and I have to have things piping hot I've st I've learned that I like chaffles cold too that is so funny. I have to have it boiling. <laughs> so Sophie King Keto wrote. Hey, Sophie King. What? Another Keto Christy Davis? Because her name's Christy Davis. Yeah, because her name is Christy Davis as well, but she spells it with a C, whereas the other Christy Davis spells it with a K. There's something about being named Christy Davis. You are both beautiful and brilliant. Yeah. Now, if you haven't seen Sophie King Keto, Christy Davis's channel, I'll leave a link over Rachel's head because she's got some great content. And she actually also likes keto chow mm -hmm. and recently did a video and she has a recipe on how to make a tomato basil waffle or chaffle. We haven't tried that yet. Using the tomato basil keto chow. And I'm just thinking about taking that. I want to make it. I haven't had a chance but making that like with a grilled cheese, turning it into a grilled yeah, cheese. Yeah, because grilled cheese and tomato soup. And then also, no, no, making the waffle with the tomato basil, mm -hmm. putting cheese in between it. Right. And then making a bowl of the tomato soup using mm. the tomato basil keto chow. So you can dip it. Yeah, so you have like tomato basil waffle, grilled cheese with tomato soup. <gasps> That sounds incredible, that's, doesn't it? That's lunch. So yeah, we're definitely going to have to be making that one. So Margie wrote, Hey Margie. I love Christy too. This is the Christy with the K. Okay. She said, I found your awesome channel from her. I'm a two and a half weeks keto lifestyle down 12 pounds wow. and I love this way of eating. Thank you for your great chats and recipes. Oh, well thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Gail wrote, Hey Gail. I love Christy's lashes. I remember she did a video on how she grew them so long. Have you seen that? I have not, but I need to watch it because, yeah, I have like a lash, like my lashes are way too short. She said, I saw two videos two weeks ago on Chaffles. I ran out to Target and picked up the Dash mini waffle maker for $9.99. I love it. I've used them as hamburger buns. I'm looking forward to your workout video when you are ready. <laughs> And I will work out with you. You're gonna Aww. do. We're gonna, Rachel's gonna make a full workout video, right? We're gonna sell it and everything. It could oh be my, a comedy. Uh, so it would be a comedy. <laughs> like, how uncoordinated can you be while exercising? We will find out. Like crazy. <laughs> no, it would be awesome. So Terry wrote. Hey Terry. Liverwurst or tuna? I love them both. Yuck. She can get along with both of us. Liverwurst is awesome. Tuna fish is disgusting. 
I think you got that backwards. No. She said, as for resistance bands, they kick butt. Not sure if thighs or arms hurt more. At least she did not have to go upstairs. They are killer after a workout. I've been doing modified wall push-ups because they're easier on my shoulder, but they aren't, but they still kill my arms. I also have been doing modified lunges as I build strength and get more stability in my legs. It's the arms. I, I've done a lot with my legs. I, I seem to be like built to move things with my legs, right? Like I, I bike a lot though, and I, I can't even tell you how many times I've tried to move a piece of furniture. I don't wait for want to wait for Joe and the boys to get home. And Joe has walked into this house and seen me laying on my back, pushing furniture around with my legs because I have a lot of like lower body strength. Right. But my arms, <laughs> these bands are just absolutely shredding my arms. Uh, Bambi wrote. Hey, Bambi. I love liverwurst and Brunschweiger. Thinking about those, now I really want a waffle maker. I miss having sandwiches with one of those. Onion, cheese, and mustard. Ooh, have that you had that? That sounds really good. No, I haven't because I don't have any liverwurst. I want some. I can remember my mom eating liverwurst and onion together as like a very We never had it with onion. I just liked liverwurst. Taste combination for her. Idraz wrote. Hey, Idraz. Uh, Joe, have you found some low-carb liverwurst? Most I find has too much sugar. Yes! Well, actually, the ones that I have found, U.S. Wellness, which that one is grass-fed, and it's really good. Um, I'll leave a link for that one down below. But also, the one at Aldi's was very low in carbs and sugar. Oh, man, that's too accessible. <laughs> um, Jody Olson wrote, hey, Jody. Is Liverwurst and Brunschweiger the same thing? I have found a brand of Brunschweiger that has no added sugar. I like to slice it and put a little cream cheese and everything bagel seasoning on it. I also discovered I like liver when I cooked it for my dog and tried it. I need to experiment with ways to season it. Okay, so Liverwurst and Brunschweiger, are they the same thing? Sort of. They're both German liver sausage. Um, they're usually made from pork so pork liver. Okay. Uh, usually the difference is Brunschweiger is actually made in a certain town and it's usually smoked. Oh, okay. Whereas Liverwurst is just the name for, you know, like liver sausage. But they both are liver sausages. It's just Brunschweiger is usually smoked. Liverwurst usually has some bacon in it. Okay, so I didn't think that I could be more repulsed by this, but now that you've broken it down, I feel like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm even more leery But they, they are pretty much both the same. It's just the reason they even add the bacon to the liverwurst is to bring it that smoky flavor that you would have in Brunschweiger. But a lot of times you'll see a package that says both names on it. Sounds gagtastic. We are getting some this week, and Rachel is going to eat it next week on Keto in the Couch. <laughs> Kathleen wrote... Hey, Kathleen. Oh, beef tongue sandwiches. They're great. What are you doing? What's happening here? This, this is spiraling. <laughs> Liver, tongue. Absolutely. Denise wrote... Hey, Denise. Is she really this silly? <laughs> Meaning you. I want to show you my shoes. <laughs> And my clam. Yes. She is really this silly. Yeah. A little bit. So Jade wrote. Hey, Jade. Has anyone tried making and freezing these? She's talking about the chaffles. Yeah. She said, I'm always looking for stuff that I can meal prep ahead of time. Yeah. Like I said earlier, you can freeze them or refrigerate them. I think they taste better when you freeze them and then stick them in the toaster oven or the air fryer. Like an egg waffle. Yeah. Low battery. We got to get through this. Uh-oh. So Barbara wrote, Hey, Barbara. Shoot me, but I put two of these little waffle makers in the donation box. Aww. They sat in my cabinet for two years. This is so funny. Oh, my goodness. Right? Who would have known? We have done that several times where we've had, like, an appliance. We never use it. We get rid of it. In fact, we had a waffle maker, like yep. a Belgian waffle maker. We got rid of it because we never used it. And now we're back to making waffles. We honestly were like, well, we'll never make them waffle again. I don't know why we didn't think like how to make this cheese and egg combination. Right. Make your own batter. So Steve wrote. Hey, Steve. I'm loving this chaffle craze. I almost bought a waffle maker, but then I remember my old Foreman grill came with waffle plates. Oh, wow. I triple the recipe and I cook it all at once. Thanks for bringing this to my attention. Nice. Can you imagine 
like how many different types of waffle makers are going to be available for the holiday season. I think it's incredible that everybody is selling out of them. But I mean, hey, don't give us too much credit for bringing this to your, your attention because everybody is talking about yeah. it. We're just really enjoying it. And I'm enjoying the chaffles because I feel like I'm eating more food because we've actually really lowered the amount of cheese we're putting in. I know in our video we said a half ounce of cheese because that's what most people use, but I'm down to like, or a half a cup of cheese. I'm down to like less than a quarter of a cup of cheese in one of the chaffles. And it's working great. And it works well, but then I don't know, something about it, that egg gets nice and fluffy. I feel like I'm eating more food than just an egg. Mm -hmm. And then like everything has become a sandwich, like a little bit of brisket on one half of a chaffle and like dipping sauces and scooping up the butter that's on the plate. What do they say? It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, once again, it, that's what it feels like, right? Yes. Like, oh my gosh, there's bread. But, right. I mean, but, but it's, it's not bread. But it's not bread. But you you can use it. You know, we've been looking for more ways to like have a hand conveyance. Yes. So Hungry Heath wrote, Hey, Hungry Heath. I am a secondhand vegetarian. Eat more meat. Oh my gosh, because you're not a vegetarian, but what you eat was a vegetarian. I love that. I am stealing that. So when people start going, you need to be a vegetarian. I am a vegetarian. I just eat the meat that eats the vegetables. You're totally going to put that on a shirt. I definitely would put that on a shirt. So Miss Beth wrote, Hey, Miss Beth. If you think about it, spending more to eat healthy now will save you on doctor bills later. True. When I first started keto, my husband didn't love some of the keto product prices, and I replied, it's cheaper than liposuction. Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. But yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> when you think about, we should probably even just add up the medication bill that we don't pay anymore. My arthritis medication was $78 a month. But you have and to, that was after insurance. But you also have to think we don't take Advil. Yep. We don't take, you know, use a bunch of Icy Hot anymore, except for when I'm using those bands. <laughs> um, but just a lot of like- I don't get sick. Above the prescription, there's a lot of over-the-counter meds yep. that we don't purchase anymore. Yep. Same for my mom. You figure between my painkillers and my arthritis medication, that was close to $100 a month right there. Haven't taken anything in two and a half years, so. What is that? Like almost three thousand dollars right there that I haven't used. But then, when and then top in, yeah, like you said, the Advil cold medicine because I never get sick anymore. You really don't get sick anymore. Yeah. We used to buy bee pollen like it was going out of style because I had the worst allergy attacks. I think in two and a half years I've had one allergy attack, yeah. which is amazing because I used to have one every week. We're not taking antihistamine. No more antihistamine. There's no Zyrtec, Allegra. Allegra. I don't buy any of that stuff. And that stuff was like $40 a bottle. You know what else I have not had any, like you haven't had to get gas X, not to like TMI. Well, I never took any of that stuff. I did. You did. Beano. Pepto-Bismol. We don't have any kind of acid reflux. Yeah. Haven't had any of that. So yeah, we've, I would say we probably saved at least $5,000 in medication over the last two years. And a lot of it being just over the counter. Just think about that. If you, even if you got on keto and you weren't on prescription meds, put down in the comments below, what were over the counter medication that you used to buy regularly that you no longer buy? How much money has your mother saved on uh, diabetes medication. Oh my goodness, she saved a lot. Not just that, but also those like quick acting tablets that you would you would buy just in case you need to like keep a pouch of you know quick acting sugar in your purse. Yeah, I just never thought about the liposuction. I think that's hysterical. Yeah. So Susan wrote. Hey Susan. I'm not sure if the grass fed meat I got was good, but it tasted terrible. Uh -oh. It had a weird texture to it and a strange taste. I wonder if it is something I have to get used to. What do you think? It shouldn't taste terrible or no. weird. It real, if anything, it should be like a much better taste. Almost, Almost like, like a buttery. Buttery taste. It sounds like something may have been a little wrong with it. I would like maybe go find out from the store, like where did they get it from? Yeah. So last one. Delissa wrote. Hey, Delissa. I used to tell my children all the time that my mother, grandma, was not the same person that raised me. Now that I'm the grandma, I'm so with you, Joe. I totally spoiled the grands. They can do no wrong with me knowing that I get to send them back at home at some point. Oh yeah, absolutely. Want to stay up late? Want to like, you know, eat Here, ice have cream for sugar. dinner? <laughs> yeah. But also as Rachel said, I have more patience, experience, and don't sweat the small stuff. So many things are not as serious as they seem when I was a young parent trying to figure it all out. 
Now my children say I'm not the same person that raised them. Well, it's nice at least it's like generational. You you get a season of being the good guy and you get a season of being the bad guy, right? right. So we're, you know, we are coming out of that season of being the bad guy, Joe. And yeah. we're heading into, you know, the, the next phase of our life when we have grandkids, we'll get to be the good guy. I'm not quite ready for that part yet. Oh, no, I mean, we have time. First, we have to be like, you know, the the empty nesters with like all this time and energy on our hands, right? Yeah, that will be fun if it ever happens, but it'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is the last comment for this week. If you guys have any questions or comments for us, leave them down in the comment section and we will read them for next week's Keto on the Couch. And we hope that you have a great week and we love you. Yeah. So if you guys like what you saw, do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.